Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to Directions Live Online. I hope you are all keeping safe during these uncertain times. My name is Manish Patel, and I'm your host for today's webinar. Now, as always, just a reminder before we get started that we are recording today's webinar, and we'll be sending out a link to the recording later this week. So if you want to rewatch it, you'll have that available to you. Also, to ask questions, you can do that anytime during the presentation by adding your questions into the GoToWebinar panel on the right hand side. We have got plenty of time at the end where we can answer any of your questions. Moving on to the today's topic, understanding the spread of coronavirus has been a key to managing this global pandemic. Governments, health care organizations, businesses and the public are constantly looking for information on where new cases are being reported and more recently, on which services are accessible during lockdown. There have been multiple dashboards, maps, and apps who hubs stood up in the last month that deliver an accurate snapshot of the incidence of COVID-19 across the globe. Discover the data and resources supporting this central points of truth and the tools available for data visualization in ArcGIS dashboards and Arcade. Today's presenter, G, is a professional services consultant with S3 Australia. G works uh, with a wide range of clients to build solutions that streamline business practices and bring data to life through visualization. He started his career with Transport Canberra right after graduating with honors as a civil engineer from the Un University of New South Wales where he delivered multiple projects ranging from construction, information technology, and policy changes. So without any further ado, I shall pass the presentation over to G. Over to you, G. Yeah, thanks, Manish. Um, hi, everyone. As Manish said, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm G Fernando from Estuary Australia, working in the professional services team. And for those of you who do, I'm still G Fernando. Uh, in this presentation, I'll demo some products I've built using data sets available in our Australian uh, COVID-19 hub. And my intention is that you'll be able to use some of the design principles that I'm going to show with your own data sets and make even more amazing products. But due to time constraints, I won't be going into the low-level details of each application, but I will definitely include resources and point you in the right direction. Okay, uh, in this presentation, I'll cover uh, dot density maps, uh, blank base maps and when to use them, configurable apps, uh, label classes, my new best friend, Arcade, and finally, some capabilities of the new ArcGIS dashboards. So first up, um, I'll share my screen. First up, uh, dot density maps. So here is a dot density map of the population distribution across Australia at a SA1 level, broken down into the people over the age of 65 and under the age of 65, where each dot represents a number of people. And at the moment, one dot represents 40 people. And as I zoom in, that number will change automatically. And you'll be able to easily identify where the elderly live and where the population density is high and potentially requiring more intervention measures for the COVID-19 pandemic. If you want to learn more about dot density maps, here is a great blog post written by Jennifer Abel. Uh, it is a great blog and it will definitely get you heading in the right direction. Uh, another thing I wanted to draw your attention was the pop-ups within the map. So if I click on a region, uh, it'll show some more details about that uh, about that area and the people living in those areas. And all of this information is coming from the underlying feature layer. And there is also a link here for ABS Quick Stats, where users are able to click on it and learn more about that area. So let's now click on one. And as you can see, there's a lo lot more information in it about the and it uh, has information about the demography education employment and so forth let's go back to the map and i'll click on a different region 
and I'll bring about the quick stats for that and I'll explain how I put this dynamic URL together. So this one is for O'Connor ACT. This one, the first one I showed was for Braden. And as you may notice, the URLs of, the, of both of them look exactly the same apart from the last number at the end, which is the SA2 ID, which is actually in our a feature layer and it, the field name for that is SA2 main 16. So when you are uh, constructing a URL, you keep the first bit of the URL exactly as it is. And rather than writing a number at the end, you write the field name SA2 main 16. And that, that's how you come up with those dynamic URLs for different regions. Next up on the G train is blank base maps. This is an accumulation of electoral boundaries with health indexes published by the Australian National University. A higher health index represents better health services, which is shown by this dark blue color. And we expect these areas uh, to be in major cities like Perth and Sydney. And you can also hover over these regions uh, and to see the pop-up, which is shown on the top right. Something I can't really show you on this webinar is that I'm not actually clicking on any of these. I'm just hovering over them with my mouse and the pop-ups are displayed on the top right. And if you want to uh, use this functionality, the hover over like pop-ups functionality, please check out the media configurable app, app templates and you'll be able to uh, configure them there. Let's zoom back out. Okay, now let's address the elephant in the room, which is this doesn't have a base map at all. And it probably doesn't need one, as I'm only trying to convey the health indexes to the end user. And by looking at it, it's sort of quite obvious that the data is in relation to Australia anyway. And But by introducing a base map with roads and rivers and oceans, it's only going to add white noise to this app and distract the end user uh, from the message you're trying to convey. And not to mention, it'll even slow down the application by a tiny bit. So to learn more about blank base maps, I would highly recommend this blog post written by John Nelson. He has even created two black, uh, blank base maps, uh, which come in black or white, uh, that you can add to your own uh, maps without any configuration at all. But if you'd prefer a, hinge of, a tint of blue or pink, uh, there's details on how to do that too. So this is a relationship map of the same data set. And rather than just looking at health indexes, we are comparing health indexes with economic indexes. So this dark brown color represents high economy and high health areas, whereas this color represents low economy and low health areas. And again, I can hover over the regions and get more details in the pop-ups, which is shown on the top right. This is another app uh, built from the same map, but this app is uh, it's using the interactive legend app template where users can filter the data through the legend below. So if they click a section here, only those areas will be shown on the maps. We'll look at the other scale of the spectrum. Yeah, you get the idea. And But for this one, of course, I used a base map because you want to give a bit of context to your end user. Because if you had just selected those colors, and if there wasn't a base map, it'll be quite hard to understand the data is in relation to Australia or where in Australia the data is in relation to. So yeah, please uh, use blank base maps when you can. But yeah, also be careful when to use them as well. Next up, we have label classes. So this is a map of Australia showing the number of recorded COVID-19 cases and deaths at a state level. This information is coming from this feature layer, which is also in our COVID-19 hub and is kept up to date. But what I want to highlight is the new addition of label classes within uh, web maps. The first thing you might notice is that there are two classes for each feature, one for the number of cases and one for the number of deaths. And as I zoom out, 
the labels readjust automatically to be more proportionate to the map size. And if I were to zoom out again, it'll only show the total case numbers uh, and not the number of deaths. I've designed it this way uh, as there is not enough real estate in the map to show all that information. But I can still hover over a region and see that low level detail on the top right. And if you want to learn more about label classes, here is another blog post written by uh, Jennifer Bell. Uh, that'll, yeah, uh, which is really awesome. And yeah, which is, yeah, it has lots of detail in it. And yeah, you can definitely yeah, learn a lot from that one. Let's go back into this and zoom back to the initial extent. On top of the feature layer, there is also a hosted table of historical cases as shown in the pop-ups. So in the pop-ups, you can see the number of new cases for the last 10 days. And here is that hosted table where that information is coming from, where each new row, so where each new row is a new day with an accumulation of cases added up until that day. But as you saw in the pop-up, I just wanted to display the number of new cases per day rather than a cumulative number. So, and I was able to do this with a little bit of arcade scripting, uh, yeah, without me having to change the data structure at all. So in the arcade script, I just wrote a calculation to subtract this number from this number to give me the new number of cases for this day. And for this day, it would be a matter of subtracting this number from this number. Um, and I've, I've displayed those information, display that information in the pop-up. And also it'll, uh, the dates will keep changing. So for the new cases per day, the newest case, uh, the newest date is the 7th of May. It goes up until 28th of April and tomorrow it'll go from 8th of May till the 29th of April. And that's all driven through a simple arcade expression. And again, what I really want to highlight is that this data set is not owned by me, so I can't uh, edit this data, but with Arcade, I can manipulate the data and show it the way I want it to the end user. Um, and also if users wanna drill down into the data a bit more, they can zoom in and find out how their LGAs are comparing. So again, you can hover over LGA and find out the number of confirmed cases for that area and also cases per 100,000 people. If you, so yeah, we'll just hover over a few more regions uh, to see, yeah, to see the potential of the hover over, potential of the hover over capability. But yeah, if you can, uh, yeah, I just wanna bring the attention to the legend here now. So the circles represent the number of cases. A big circle means there are lots of cases in that area. And I've also used color to represent cases per 100,000 people. And I think it's really important with this, this sort of data to normalize your data, whether it's showing cases per 100,000 people or cases per 1 million people, just because otherwise, otherwise uh, if you were to just go off by the number of cases, the data can look a bit disproportionate just because one LGA could have a million people, another LGA could have like a thousand people then yeah, you can't really compare cases against those two uh, uh, LGAs just because the, the populations are like vastly different. So yeah, it's really important to normalize your data when it comes to data sets like this. Let's zoom out again. And also to give you a bit of context, the inspiration for this map came from looking at newspaper websites and I really wanted to make a map where I could embed that in a newspaper website without it being too much of a color contrast. But sadly, to my knowledge at least, <laughs> this hasn't been embedded in, a, in any newspapers yet, but I did make up a fake newspaper called the Simon Jenkins Times, and this is what the map would have looked like. So it's just an embed uh, within a newspaper website where yeah, with the same functionality. So I can zoom out and the labels readjust, can zoom back in, we can zoom back in even more to get that LGA level of detail. And if you are interested in embedding this map in your own website, here is the HTML code. And yeah, please feel free to yeah, use that code. And if you do, uh, yeah, just make sure to shout me a beer later. 
next up, I uh, wanted to talk about this feature layer, uh, this really amazing feature layer, actually, that's been put up, put up by uh, Geoscience Australia and also the Australian Government Department of Health. Uh, so it's essentially a feature layer showing where all the test, center, test centers are in Australia. So if I go to the data tab, it will tell me there are 331 uh, test centers uh, in this uh, table. All of them have a facility name and most of them have addresses uh, followed by suburbs, state, postcodes. And it even has information like uh, open and close times for the weekday. So it'll have what time it opens on a Monday, what time it closes on a Monday. And if it opens at 9.30, uh, it'll say 9.30. If it closes at 6 p.m., it'll say 1.800. And you'll have that for the remaining six days as well. And I was able to uh, build this web map using that data. And let's just zoom into maybe Sydney and bring about a pop-up. But as you can see, uh, I'm. if you look at the data, it's showing numbers as 930, 1800, uh, 1300, things like that. With a little bit of arcade, I was able to convert that to AM time and PM time. It also highlights what day of the week uh, it is today. So today is Thursday, and the opening hours for Thursday are from 8 AM till 8 PM. And it even has a status here saying it's open at the moment, and it'll close at 8 PM. So that's why there's an 8 PM there. Let's click on a different one, maybe. So this one closed at 9 p.m. And it also has the 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 opening hours for the re remaining six days of the week as well. And after I made this web map, I extended this web map to a nearby configurable app where people could type in an address and it'll look for features within a certain radius. And it'll bring about the pop-ups from those features in a nicely formatted manner in the left-hand side column. So let's go to that nearby template. Uh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention was that all these resources that I'm gonna show up, show today are available in our COVID-19 hub. So yeah, after the presentation, yeah, please do make sure to go in there and have a poke around and yeah, uh, take advantages of these amazing resources. So here is that web map, a uh, web app I mentioned. So you can, we can go in here, let's say, uh, choose the current location. It'll look for features uh, around a certain radius. So it's currently searching around 25 Ks. And the, my closest one is the clinic at Cray's. It's saying it's gonna open soon because the time at the moment is 12.48 and it's gonna open soon at 1 p.m. and it's gonna close at 5 p.m. for that day. And, and I can even click here and to get directions to it. In fact, I used this app just yesterday because my GP recommended that I should get tested for COVID. And I actually went to this one and I hit get directions and yeah, got me there safely. And yeah, so yeah, this app actually works. Uh, but again, I want to give a massive thanks, a shout out to Geoscience Australia for putting this together, this amazing data set. Only because of the data, we are able to create front end applications like this. Okay, uh, to prove that this is actually a dynamic uh, pop-up, I'm actually gonna change the time, my system time to something else. We'll right click here, go adjust date time. Everyone loves their Friday, so I'll change it to Friday. And because you guys are a good bunch, I'll change it to 421 and give you guys an early mark. 4.25 p.m. that is, uh, where's 21 p.m. Let's change it. And let's open that up in a new tab. Uh, I'll search for my current location. Yeah, because I changed the system time to Friday for 4.21, it's saying that it's Friday now, and it's it's saying it's gonna close soon at 5 p.m. and it'll reopen again at 1 p.m. on the Tuesday because it's closed on the Saturday, the Sunday, and the Monday. 
Um, and I know most of the users are here are from Sydney, so we can press Sydney and look up some facilities there. So these are some facilities for Sydney at a 25k radius. Uh, we can search for Melbourne. And again, uh, you can see those details. And if you are interested in building apps like this, I have written a blog post on this exact topic. It's called Make Time Aware Pop-Ups with Arcade. Uh, it's not in relation to a COVID-19 data set because I wrote that at the start of the year. It's in relation to office open and close times, but you'll be able to use the same principles that I've shared here uh, for any data set or, or, or a COVID data set. And, and e even if you don't know any arcade, you should be able to copy and paste the code as code as it is, as long as the, the initial data structure is the same and you'll be able to get it working. And here is a, another blog post I've written on a similar principle. So this is for bus timetables, um, where, so this is the app I made for it. So if I choose current location, it'll look for bus stops near that area. I'll have to say, increase that a bit. It'll look for bus stops near that area and it'll show when those buses are coming. So yeah, it's just loading at the moment. So uh, the time, it's still 4.23 on the Friday. So yeah, it's saying uh, there, there's a bus coming at 4.27, uh, 4.55, and I've missed, just missed these two buses. And the hosted table, so GTFS table for that is here. Uh, and what's really cool is, yeah, in this table, there are 441,441, 830 records. And out of all those records, so all of the records have an arrival time and a departure time and tells you when they are operational, whether it's operational on Friday or not, and the days they are operational from to which day. So essentially what's it, do, what's it doing is going through all of these records and displaying what's relevant for that bus stop at that time on that day and displaying it in a nice format to the end user. And I was able to do that all all by using, uh, by writing some simple arcade code. And again, uh, that blog is here. Uh, and as I said before, even if you don't know any arcade, you'll be able to copy and paste it and get it to work. And if you can't get it to work, or if you have any trouble with it, just write a comment here and I'll yeah try and help you out uh, where I can. Might change this back to the normal time so I'm, I know how much time I have left. Okay, 12.53. Um, to finish things off and lighten the mode a bit, uh, let's talk about this project I worked with my kids during the COVID-19 lockdown. You may have noticed that lots of teddies have uh, started appearing uh, during this time to keep the kids distracted uh, with all all the un uncertainty that's going around. And I wrote a, uh, a story map around this. And it's essentially, there's a survey one, two, three here where people can take a picture of a teddy and put the location of the teddy on a map and submit it. Then it'll be displayed here. And I've also gone ahead and made a dashboard out of it. So at the moment, for Australia at least, there uh, have been 88 teddies put in. And if you guys like this presentation, I'd really appreciate it if you guys can go into this story map and put a teddy on there. Uh, that will definitely make my day and my kids' day as well. Um, I'll, so I'll quickly, so this is, I'm actually using the new ArcGIS dashboards uh, to show this information. And like the old one, I can filter results by the map extent. So if I zoom into Canberra, uh, it's saying there are about 47 teddies. And these are all the teddies names which are, which are randomly generated. So yeah, let's click on a couple of, yeah, let's click on Tobias because I know a Tobias in our office. Yeah, so that, there's a picture of Tobias right there. And you can even get the walking directions uh, to the teddy bear. And what I wanted to highlight was the 
one of the new capabilities of the new ArcGIS dashboard. So if I look at the feature layer that's driving all these results, if I go back to the story map, actually, I'm only capturing a photo and the location, but in the feature layer, there's also a randomly generated number, which, which is Teddy name. But if I look at the dashboard, I can't see any numbers. It's actually a name. And I was able to perform, get that to work by writing a simple arcade expression uh, in an array. So I'd say like number one equals this name, number two equals this name, and present that here. And also it's saying how old they are. That's just a calculation of what the date, what the time it is now, subtract that from when it was entered. And that's how I'm getting that again using a arcade code. Um, yeah, so that's one of the new features in the ArcGIS dashboard, in the new ArcGIS dashboards. And you can uh, write Arcade within list elements, and you can also write Arcade for indicator elements and detail elements as well. Uh, and with that, uh, I've only got four minutes left, so I'll probably finish the presentation there and, and hand it over to Manish. And yeah, Manish can let me know if any questions have come through, and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability if I can. Thanks, G. Um, that was a great session, by the way. Uh, understanding the different information and how we can actually represent using the different arcade expression. I'm sure that everyone must have found that interesting as well. Uh, we have had a couple of questions come through. If you have been listening intently to G and you haven't got a chance to type out your question, you can still do that. Uh, to just kick off, I think um, you have a question from Jonathan, and he says, can you share the code for displaying the number of new cases per day from the historical cases hosted table? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I think Jonathan is referring to this web, web app I showed before. So when you hover over a region, it shows the new cases per day. And where in the hosted table, uh, it was a cumulative number, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a, it's a cumulative number. So the arcade code for that is, I think I've actually got it here open. Uh, it's right here. Uh, yeah, so you can uh, probably take a screenshot of the screen, like uh, what I'm showing, and yeah, copy and like write that out as, as it is, and you'll be able to get that to work. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And and if, if uh, lots of people have, the, have a similar interest, I, I'd even be keen to write a blog post around it as well. Thanks, Manish. Are there any other questions? Um, we do have few questions, but I'm afraid that we do not have much time. I could take one more question though. Uh, and Sarah says, are there any differences in how you could write arcade expression in web maps compared to ArcGIS dashboard? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think I had a, yeah, yeah, here it is. So yeah, actually it is quite different uh, how you write your, uh, actually, sorry, to, I'll take that back. Uh, the arcade expressions are the same, but in dashboards, it's a little, little bit different how you structure your arcade expressions compared to your web maps. In your web maps, you might know that you have to write separate arcade expressions for separate things. Like if you're trying to get uh, color, it has to be a separate arcade expression. If you're trying to calculate the number of days past a certain day, you have to write a separate one for that. And if you want to do something else, you have to do a separate one. Whereas with dashboards, you can write all those arcade expressions in one window and uh, return those expressions in a dictionary like this. And so I think that's the biggest difference uh that i can see to date and there's some documentation uh put up by s3 on on it so i'll share a link to that as well after this presentation thank you for that manish that was a good question as well thanks thanks g i hope that answers your question sarah um and then one last question um we can take is ori says can you send the urls of some of the resources you shared so i think um Gee, I can answer that on your behalf. Um, definitely yeah, all the good. resources that that we have shared during the webinar. Um, in fact, if there could be any additional resources, we'll be definitely sharing it 
out later on with um, everyone as part of a um, follow-up email which comes in so uh, you can keep looking out for the um, email which has the, all the information in, included as well as it also will have a link to the recording as well yeah so i'll quickly add one, one more thing to that manish sorry. if that's all right so something yeah, 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 i forgot yeah. to share was where of a uh, uh, COVID 19 oh sorry I i'll show my screen sorry, you have to share your screen yeah Sorry yeah, about that. So where, where the Australian COVID-19 hub is. So that's a URL, which we'll share as a link as well. Uh, yeah. And everything I talked about, all the data sets are in here as well. Uh, so you can click on there, click on data, and uh, look at all those great resources. So here is that feature layer that uh, Geoscience Australia had put together in regards to where the test centers are. And you can also yeah find out more about some of the apps we've built and some of the upside demoed as well yeah that's all in here yeah thanks that thanks awesome. that manish thanks thanks g um awesome so i think with that um i think let me just share my screen here all right so so what, what we have next uh, is in terms of the series for the covid 19 is um, definitely some of the excellent like presenters and um, outstanding topics that we have tried to come out with um, so you can feel free to register we do have some of the uh, topics mentioned and it's uh, available on the uh, event website so do keep a lookout for the space for upcoming events and any other webinars um, and also we really love your feedback so take time to fill out the brief survey you'll see pop up at the end of the session and uh, further feedback or questions can send directly to events at sreaustralia.com.au. And finally, if you would like to rewatch this webinar or share with your colleagues, the recording will be available shortly on the SC Australia's event page. With that, thanks, G, for taking out time from the busy schedule and sharing with our GIS community. Thanks and for the thanks opportunity, Manish. <laughs> yeah. um, thanks, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you for the next Directions Live online.